So if you found that your photos are feeling boring or uninspired, here's five things that might help. What's up, my name's Chris Tejas. I'm a photographer and videographer based in Ontario, Canada. I mainly focus on portraits, weddings, events, anything where there's people, that's what I like to photograph. And that's what we're gonna focus on today. How to make your photographs of people feel more interesting. I've got five things here that I like to think about when I'm shooting that are beyond things like settings, aperture, ISO, shutter speed, all that stuff. These are, are more about how you think about composing and how you think about your shot. So without any further ado, here's number one. We're gonna call this one environmental framing or, or blocking it's sometimes called. Blocking confuses me a little bit because I also work in film and television. And when we talk about blocking, we're talking about getting all the cast members in to, uh, to figure out where the scene's gonna be. But it does actually make sense for what I'm talking about a little bit here too, because when I'm talking about blocking or environmental framing, what I'm really saying is figuring out how to put certain things into your frame so that you are allowing the, um, the attention to be drawn towards the person you're photographing more effectively. Usually things that I'm using are things like, like door frames or, or window frames, stuff like that. If you're outside using things like leaves or trees or tall grass, things like that. It's a very simple way to try and get a little bit more attention and focus towards your subject when maybe sometimes it would be an otherwise kind of like standard boring slowdown. Number two is unique angles. And this is something that I really, really love and something I think about a ton. For me, um, I came from a street photography background. So that meant that when I was photographing people, a lot of the times I was shooting from the hip or I was getting kind of like, you know, funny little angles so that I could still get the shot I wanted, but I wasn't drawing too much attention to myself. Not because I didn't want people to see me, but because I didn't want to ruin the authentic moment that was happening. And so when I am photographing things like weddings and events now, I'm always thinking about where's a kind of unique place I can put myself so that I can get a shot that maybe wouldn't otherwise exist uh, if somebody is more maybe like classically trained or if they are just used to taking those more straightforward photos. So uh, ways to think about this is, like I said, shooting from the hip, getting down low, getting to the side, bring your camera up above your head. Um, the best thing you can do when you're trying to do sort of unique angles is to get your coverage that you need. So make sure you get, you know, the, the normal shot that you need. And then from there, what I like to do in kind of, you know, the more fast running gun scenarios is I actually take my camera and I put it into a drive mode that allows me to take a few more photos. So, you know, a burst mode of some sort. And then I'll just try a bunch of different angles so that I can see what works and what doesn't. And I'll go from there. Um, the more you can think about where you're going to position your couple or the people that you're photographing, I think that the better you can then kind of play with angles. Because if you're thinking like, okay, I know I want to put them in the corner of the frame or the side of the frame or the top half or the bottom half of the frame, from there, you can get really interesting results if you just shift the camera a little bit one way or another. This doesn't mean like throwing a Dutch angle in for no reason, but it means using the fact that these photos are probably going to be seen in, in concert with each other, like as part of a gallery, that allows you to tell a more full story by using more angles. So when you're using angles, think about, is this going to be a standalone photo or is this going to be something that works as part of the bigger picture for this gallery? Number three is to shoot with the edit in mind. Now, sometimes you're just shooting because you got to shoot, you got to get the, the shot that you need um, but but sometimes what you can do is you can think about what you want the end result of that photo to be and you can shoot accordingly the most obvious example of this would be things like silhouettes you know you are bringing down your exposure in camera in order to allow for that silhouette to happen and that's a really obvious one a lot of shooting with the edit in mind is really just exposure it is making sure your exposure levels are relative to what you want that final image to be but I would also say that you can think about shooting with the edit in mind in terms of composition as well. Sometimes you know that you want the composition to look a certain way, but you might not be able to achieve it with the lens you have on or with the angle that you're at or where you have to frame things. So if you can think about, okay, I know that to get the shot I want, I'm gonna have to crop a little bit. How am I going to go about shooting this so that that crop can happen later? And just thinking about that while you're taking the photo can, can really help. So having the edit in mind. Number four is to shoot in black and white. Now I'm not saying that you might deliver all the images in black and white, but sometimes I find that by shifting your you know, LCD screen and viewfinder over to a black and white setting, even if you're shooting raw, 
that can help you to think about your photos differently. The nice thing about a mirrorless system is you're not stuck into just seeing what's through the optical viewfinder, so you can actually change what's in front of you. You know, we walk around seeing everything in full color every day, but if you switch to black and white, all of a sudden, your eye for composition and your eye for details starts to shift. At least that's my experience. You, you might find different, but for me, when I am shooting in a place where I feel like there's a lot going on or I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed, a lot of times I just switch it over so that the LCD and viewfinder are in a black and white um, picture profile. And for me, it's so much easier to just concentrate on what I'm trying to photograph. So if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling like overwhelmed by the scenario that you're in, or you're just feeling like you're not being creative in that way, maybe try switching to black and white and see what happens. Tip number five, and this purely comes from my street photography background, and that is to include your environment. So often when we're thinking of doing portraiture, we're thinking about doing these like totally blown out, beautiful shots where like, I mean, here, let me come forward a little bit. Shots like this, right? Where all of a sudden, like you see this fall off and you see like, it looks really, really beautiful, but you have no idea what's going on. You don't have any context, right? So often I think it's easy for us to get caught up in the idea of that fall off and that beautiful bokeh and all that. And that's gorgeous in the right context, but sometimes you need your environment around you. So that means stopping down a little bit, sure, but it also means getting wider, getting bigger, figuring out how to frame your, your couple or the person you're photographing or the people that are in the photograph in a way that allows you to utilize your environment. And then all of a sudden you can use things like that blocking and, and environmental framing to your advantage while still showing a wide scene to give context to the photo. You can also start doing really fun things with layering with people. And I would say that is like another huge one that is so fun. And, and to be honest, it's something I want to start doing a lot more of is layering people within an image so that I can get a really dynamic scene. So that's my five tips for you. If you want to try something a little more engaging and exciting with your photography and you're feeling a little bit stuck when you're photographing people or events or weddings, try these five things and see how they work for you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you hanging on and getting to the end of this and uh, we'll see you soon. Peace.